Today I'm gonna teach you how you can create these authentic camera shake transitions and effects inside of Premiere Pro. Let's go. My name is Evan Wynn, welcome to 11% Tutorials. As I mentioned, today I'm gonna to be teaching you how you can create these authentic looking camera shakes inside of Premiere Pro, all completely native. There's gonna be no plugins, no extra effects that you need. Just as a heads up, we are gonna be using some camera shake presets from our store, 11%.net, the Shake It Up V2 pack, absolutely insane pack. We are gonna be teaching you how you can create all these effects from scratch though, so don't worry if you don't have this pack, but just saying, it's a really insane pack. All right guys, so now that we're inside of Premiere Pro, by the way, huge shout out to vertical mode inside of Premiere Pro. I've been using this like way more than often. I use it to edit horizontal videos. I just think the layout is way better. So if you don't know how to get that, you can go to Windows, Workspaces, you can click vertical right here. Absolutely insane layout. Anyways, let's go ahead and dive right into how we can create this effect. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna create an adjustment layer. All these effects, by the way, are gonna require an adjustment layer, so you just might as well make one. You can do so by clicking this new item button in your media library, which by the way, this media library would be right here in this bottom left hand corner if you're not in vertical mode like me, which you should, you should get like me. I'm sorry, all right, let's continue. Uh, I'm gonna create an adjustment layer right here and then just make sure it's 1920 by 1080 and 24 frames per second. I always recommend doing 24 frames per second sequences just because it looks more cinematic. You have to see it to know it. Once we have our adjustment layer, we're gonna go ahead and drag it onto our timeline right here. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and trim this down to about 10 frames right here. I'm using the A hotkey to cut up my clips. And let's just make sure that it's exactly centered on the cut right here in between these two clips right here, okay? So I want it to be that there's like five frames on one side and five frames on the other. One, two, three, four, five. And on the other side, one, two, three, four, five. Perfect. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create like a really crazy hard camera shake, the most typical like music video type camera shake. And to do so, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna come to your effects and you're search for the transform effect and I'm gonna drag that to my adjustment layer. Now, very important, you have to do this step first, like absolutely mandatory. Scroll down to the transform setting right here. Make sure you're under the actual transform effect, not like your motion. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna unclick use composition shutter angle. You have to unclick it. And then what you're gonna do after that is you can crank this shutter angle up to 180 to 360. I prefer something in the middle, like 230-ish. And basically what this is, is how much motion blur there's gonna be. Motion blur basically creates the illusion that there's like a lot of movement going on the camera. And the higher shutter angle, the more motion blur there's gonna be. So now let's go ahead and actually create some effects. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the end of my adjustment layers and I'm just gonna hit a keyframe on the scale and position. Then I'm gonna select those, hold option or all if you're on PC to duplicate those and drag that to the other end. And the reason doing so is because I want these settings to be exactly the same how they were at the start and beginning so that when the camera shake is done, it goes back to the original state. Now let's go to the very middle of the clip. We're gonna go ahead and zoom in a bit. I'm gonna zoom in about like 133%. The reason why we're doing this is because we're gonna be moving the camera around a lot. We're gonna have a lot of movement going on. It's gonna be crazy. In order to not have your camera go over the edges and have like a black edge and border, what you have to do is you have to zoom in. And now once we have our zoom ins and endpoint set, the fun part, mess around with position and keyframe. And I say this is the fun part because you can do like whatever the F you want. You can even mess with rotation if you wanted to. I, I forgot to do that, but you can add rotation uh, keyframes. Just make sure to put one at zero at the beginning and end. And yeah, I guess you could rotate it a little bit, but I'm just gonna go ahead and just go absolutely ballistic with this. I'm just gonna have it go in like the most random areas and angles and go throughout your your clip throughout different keyframes and just move it around up and down. And the key thing is that you just wanna make sure that there's no black borders on the edges. So you can see right there, we have this little black border right here because we went over the edge. Now there's actually a really cool trick that I'm gonna explain in a little bit of how you can uh, avoid that. For now, let's just go ahead and do it the base simple, easy way. And boom, once we have all of our random position keyframes, you can see if we play this out now, boom, we have this like crazy kind of like jittery camera shake. And I honestly think it looks pretty cool if you ask me. You can see if we pause in the middle, we have a lot of like blur, motion blur going on right here. And you can see if I increase this shutter angle a lot, we have more motion blur. And the less I decrease it, the less motion blur there is. So like I said, I like to keep it around 230. That's just the sweet spot for me. And if you want to add even more blur and maybe you're hitting the edges too much, you can always go ahead and increase the scale of how much you're zoomed in. So that way it gives you more space that you can like mess around with and like move your, your position. Cause I think it's important that you really mess around with just like the position of everything 
and use that to the full advantage. The more movement you have, the more blur there is, the cooler the effects are gonna be. And boom, now we have this crazy camera shake effect. Just like that, really simple, easy create. If you wanna spice it up even more, what you can do is you can come over here to your effects. You can search for the Lumetri color effect. I always like to apply this because I like to add some like flashes to it. So what you can do is drag that to your adjustment layer as well. About three frames before the split, the center of the adjustment layer, we're gonna hit the drop down on basic color correction and we're gonna hit a keyframe on exposure at 0%, just the standard base. And we're gonna go three frames after, or two frames, I think I'm doing two frames here, after that cut, and I'm gonna hit another zero keyframe. I'm gonna go directly to the middle, and now I'm gonna increase that exposure up to about like three to four. And now you see if we play that out, boom, we have like a little mini flash as well. It's kind of hard to see because this is kind of already a bright scene, but if we use this effect for another clip, uh, let's say like this one right here, where there's actually like a darker scene after that, you'll see that flash for sure. You can see that flash looks definitely a lot brighter and it just adds some more electrifying feel to your camera shakes. Before we go any further, I do want to let you know about our preset pack store, 11percent.net. We have preset packs ranging from title cards, camera shakes, green screen overlay effects, and just a bunch more. If you're a video editor who's looking to save time and also spice up your edits, this is the perfect one-stop destination for all video editors. All of our preset packs are super easy to use, just drag and drop and boom, you have professional looking music music video effects. We have packs for Premiere Pro, DaVinci, Final Cut, After Effects, and a bunch more plugins. So if you're interested, you can check it out at 11percent.net. Let's get back to the video. Let's drag in another adjustment layer from our library. And now let's go ahead and create like a cool zoom in camera shake motion blur. I'm gonna go ahead and trim this one down to about like seven frames on both sides. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I guess, right. might as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and cut it right there and delete. All right, guys, so now that we have our adjustment layer, we're gonna go back to our effects panel and we're gonna search for the replicate effect. Now, really quick disclaimer, this is a special replicate preset effect that I have specifically made for these types of effects. Now, just on the load, between you and me, I'm gonna be giving you this replicate preset for free, link in the description for download. The reason being so that this replicate effect is different from the Premiere Pro replicate effect is because when you apply this to your adjustment layer, boom, you see you have this nice mirrored effect as well and it looks like there's no edges when in contrast when we apply the premiere pro replicate effect we have all these harsh edges and it just looks like a bunch of tiles of our video which we don't really want in order to do that you can do it each time by adding mirror effects and then adjusting the angles but really it's just a mess Trust me, save yourself the time and get in the link in the description. And by the way, I don't know if I mentioned it yet, but we do have a camera shake it up preset pack. Like all these effects that I'm creating and you're creating right now in this tutorial, we actually just dropped a preset pack on it. Insane has like 50 presets of all these different types of camera shakes, spins, rotations, hits, warps, zoom ins, zoom outs, literally everything that you're creating today individually having a keyframe, we already have it all done. So if you wanna check that out and you'll get the replicate effect as well for free, you can get it at 11%.net or in the link in the description as well. Seriously, it saves me so much time. So if you wanna check it out and cop one, really it'd mean the world. That's how you support me and keep me going so I can keep making free tutorials like this for you guys. But let's go ahead and finish the zoom in effect. So once we have this replicate preset applied, we're gonna go back to our effects and we're gonna search for the transform effect. You guessed it, the transform effect. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and have to zoom in at the beginning of this adjustment layer so that it blends. So I'm gonna go to the very middle of my adjustment layer first real quick. I'm gonna hit a keyframe at this scale. Oh, and of course, remember, don't forget to uncheck use composition shutter speed and then just like increase that shutter angle like a crap ton. And then I'm gonna come back to the beginning of my adjustment layer and I'm gonna zoom in to 300% um, because that's just like the, the full zoom right there. And now you can see if we play this out, we kind of have this cool zoom out effect going on right here. The only issue is that once we cut back to this other clip, we still have these tiles going on. So how do we fix that? You guessed it, even more keyframes. <laughs> what we're gonna do is we're gonna go one keyframe, this part you really have to pay attention, seriously. Go one keyframe right after that beginning of that scale in the center of our adjustment layer. And I want you to zoom in not 300%, but like 600%, I'm serious. And now the reason being so is because you want that continuous zoom out and you want it to stop at the original frame. So we have to go and zoom even more in the split second of like one frame. That's why you also have to use this 24 frame per second sequence. And now once we have that scale set to 600, I'm gonna go very to the all the way to the end of my adjustment layer 
and I'm just going to go ahead and decrease that scale back to 300%. So that way, once we play it out, we have this crazy continuous zoom. Now you can see there's kind of an issue there because I actually didn't zoom in as much as I should have. Not like 600%, maybe like a thousand. I'm serious. You just want that same flow of movement. Okay, a thousand doesn't work. I, I broke Premiere Pro. Let me fix that. <laughs> okay, right now I'm going to go ahead and render into out just because we have a lot of rendering going on right here. Now, quick disclaimer, the reason why this one's taking so much rendering and really complicated is because I'm keeping this inside of one adjustment layer. Most other zoom in effects have to split the clip. You have to apply this part to this zoom in, this part to the other zoom in. And we're able to create this entire zoom out effect in one adjustment layer, just like that. And now you can see if we play it out, boom, we have like a crazy zoom out continuous effect. I honestly think that looks pretty cool. We have a lot of motion blur going on. Looks pretty seamless if you ask me. So if you want to create a zoom out like this, you can totally do so. And what I think would be even crazier, I blow up your computer, but you could actually apply another camera shake on top of it just to add some even more harsh camera shakes. And now once that's done rendered, you can see once we double stack our camera shakes, we have this crazy camera shake zoom out looks absolutely insane and you create it all inside of Premiere Pro with one or two adjustment layers right now, but there's no cuts in between the adjustment layers. That's all that matters, that's important. So with that, that's how you create some dope camera shake presets inside of Premiere Pro. And once again, if you wanna save yourself the time, don't wanna go through all this, have to edit, create these effects each time, you check out the Shake It Up V2 camera pack right here at 11percent.net, link in the description. I seriously poured my heart and soul into this pack. I wanted to make something actually good, something that's actually really cool and we can actually use for other video editors to up their editing skill and save themselves some time so it'll really mean the world to me if you check it out and for a limited time only one week after this video i'm sorry if this we're watching this after a week of this video it's probably already over i'm going to be giving it 30 percent off if you use this promo code right here also thanks for staying to the end so use this promo code get it 30 percent off and with that here are the final results If you guys made it to the end of the video, I just wanna say thank you again so much for watching. If you managed to find any value or help from this video, please be sure to smash the like button, hit subscribe. It's free, all this content is free, so really, it'd mean the world to me. And once again, if you're interested in copying the Shake It Up V2 pack, absolutely insane pack, seriously. All the presets that we literally created in today's tutorial, all in one pack, just drag and drop onto adjustment layers. Save yourself all the time of having to create those effects each time in Premiere. I personally have been using it for a lot of video projects recently, and seriously, not even guessing myself up, it's a great pack. If you had any questions or concerns throughout the tutorial, leave a comment down below. I love to hear what you guys have to say. Once again, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Peace.